Hi guys, welcome to this video and welcome to Left Double. I'm here again. Topic of the video is Arch. Arch Linux. Arch Linux is the basis of Arch Linux and of so many others like Garuda, Endeavor OS, KOS and so many more. So Arch is an interesting way of making an operating system, getting all these what I call always Lego blocks or packages, choices you've make, you can make from, from A till Z, right? Install X4, PDRFS, XFS, JFS, there's so many choices and you build something up and um, decide what you want to have. And that's the fun. It really feels like grown-ups Lego box for computer nerds choose whatever you want and in the Linux University you can gradually learn about your Linux system what I'm gonna do is go to phase one you will find and I'm gonna make a tutorial not this time of BTRFS but of system D boot so grub is something you probably know arch wiki that's the first thing you need to know that's what you type arch wiki nvidia grub and so on and you read so we have um, the arch boot process master boot record all interesting things to have a look already grub is one way of doing things refined is another way of booting up and there is the system d boot that's an interesting thing used to be called GUI boot. It's so all part of the Arch boot process. How does a system work? Interesting for to read, right? Old systems, new systems, BIOS and UFI. Many tutorials have been written on arcolinux.com whenever I have the chance. And that's also that's fun, right? I boot up into the system of a user, somebody I know, a friend, family, right? you have a look, how does it look when you boot into the bias, into the settings of the machine, and I document them. So things need to be set in here the right way, so you can install Linux, and you're not dependent on Windows only. So that's um, all documented already there, so bias, UFI, that's the first thing. How do I get to boot Linux, right? So information available, you just read. And you see already some technical information, what it's going to look for. And here we have the, well, the long list, right? Firmware, UFI, partition tables. So the old one, the new one, multi-boot, and here we have the file systems, PTRFS, X4, a nice summary, the names, grub, bin there, refined, just shown you, and system D boot. It says no and yes, meaning scroll up, it's for UFI. Just UFI. Okay, can be side loaded, you check out what's more in here. So we're gonna go for this one, system D boot. Where is that, that jump that we have to make? Is it the very bottom of the article? Uh, we have a lot, things, a lot of things to type, right? It's really tedious. All these code you need to type in every video that I make, but it's for you that I make this, right? Refined as alternative to grub and system deboot as alternative to grub. But there is a important thing here. Instead of booting up with grub or refined, we can use systemd boot. And the link is there. In the beginning, we have to make sure that we have the SDA1, the future UFI, can't be boot. EFI, it has to be boot. That's the difference. So all the way up, I have to think about it and say, oh, I shouldn't forget. And that's uh, that we'll, we'll do it together. All right, so this guy, this is the page, this is the page. All the way up, we start with this. I move you to my second screen. So this guy goes there and I'm gonna take VMware, 
workstation um, better create a new one but I should think about the uh, names <laughs> downloads Arch Linux fine next so this is the Arch Linux from archlinux.org I did not build myself like on the AA which is another project where you build your own Arch Linux and add Alice a script a name uh, video right video location browse put it in VMware folder next 30 is certainly enough next customize hardware 32 gigabyte to give away so let's go all the way up to 10 or something processors just the one with 16 of them so 8 and then all the rest is okay then I have to think about closing this don't do that because finish I want to edit this as well option I'm gonna fake to be a new system bias grub right grub UFI ah you can use refined or you can use system D boot so it has to be UFI virtual box VMware whatever you choose the virtual machine has to be told that it's a new machine UFI and then it starts again right all the typing so if you see colors if you see a nice logo of Arch Linux wrong right then you're in grub uh, sorry in, in a bias so this is what you need black screen and that's UFI the words they mention UFI so yes you're right in virtual machine virtual glob in uh, VMware control alt releases my cursor and I go back to my second screen because I need to scroll to the first occurrence of the blue border all the blue borders are the things I have to type but maybe you don't have to type this one because this gets me my Azerti key yay let me scroll on I know it's EFI time date CTL set NTP true scrolling on partitioning this is very personal and there is no right way there is many ways GPT is anyway the correct way UFI right so GPT bias is DOS GPT UFI by the right way is is this right you have a big pizza a big cake and you divide it into pieces how much should the EFI uh, partition be it's an important it really is an important right if you take you're not gonna with a one terabyte SSD SSD today right who cares about 500 megabyte but it has to be something so I'm gonna use 500 yeah numlock is not on 500 M is enough MB megabyte and then he says Linux file system I say no type enter go up EFI the next thing is maybe one swap if you don't have enough uh, memory if you say okay I have only two gigabytes memory or five or four or eight I know eh? you want to have something a swap partition fine 5g 5 gigabyte enter but tell it type tell it that it's Linux swap done and this is for me the easiest way because it doesn't matter maybe you have a 120 gigabyte a 250 a 512 a thousand twenty-four uh, the rest is root I never make home partitions that doesn't make sense to me home check out the dot config check out the dot local after year it's filled with rubbish all the stuff that you installed prior so clean install is always preferred this looks good 
EFI, 500 megabytes, 5 gigabyte Linux swap, and the Linux file system. Don't uh, need to go in here, it's okay. But I do need to write it. If you don't write it and you don't type yes, you don't have anything. So I'll better check with an LS block. SDA123. Okay. Then we go back to the page, we scroll on, scroll, scroll, scroll. Now we have to remember we want to have system D, right? So the formatting, that's okay. The formatting, everybody needs the formatting. FAT F32 device SDA1. So that's formatted. Then the make swap. device SDA2 and the swap is going to be on nope that's not it <laughs> swap on device SDA2 check we're not making going to make it complex it's already complex enough system D boot fine so we're going to make the file system x4 device SDA3 a simple X4 and then you scroll down follow this article if you want to format PTRFS no nope, we're not gonna do it done and made videos about it mount the file systems here we're gonna deviate right we need to mount the device SDA3 to MNT that's the same we're gonna make a directory inside SDA inside sorry inside MNT of course because it's mounted and we're gonna call it boot yes thinking yes and what's now different is the mount there eh? this if you plan to use system D boot instead of grab or refine then first read this article small line beneath the border there uh, mount device uh, SDA1 okay device SDA1 maybe I was thinking I put the line a little bit in the border so MNT boot not boot EFI do not create EFI folder I just create MNT boot all right that's the difference and then we scroll on we keep on going scroll down select the mirrors okay nano etc pacman.d mirror list Osbeck, yay! Osbeck wins. I always say Osbeck is the best one for Belgium and it's actually from Sweden, so it says something about Belgium. <laughs> it's cpacman.conf. We do want to have fast downloads because this really is boosting everything on my end, of course. If you pay for a good uh, internet connection, you can have a faster downloads with five parallel downloads. Backstrap. Where are, going, are we going to put the data? In the folder MNT, base and base development, Linux. And I saw again some updates today. Linux firmware. No, no. I love my best completion. I'm gonna type it already here. So in phase two, I don't have to. You can add more stuff, right? If you already say, I want to have VI or on anything, uh, be my guest, keep typing. If it's Arch, right? That's something you need to remember. If it's Arch, you can install it. If it's on the AUR, you have to wait. So, scrolling down, one of the most important things coming up FS tap. So generate me FS tap minus U and then T go inside here. And this is important. I take my time to check if it's okay what I typed. 
So we've got SDA3, root, x4, we have SDA1, boot, vfat, not boot, EFI, boot, and swap. We're good to go. Scrolling down, shrooting, archroot, the way to fix any Arch Linux out there. We're inside the system. This is my future system, the system that has crashed. Remove the kernel, remove the configuration, remove an XORG file. Oh, everything works again. So easy. Time zone. Yes, there are tutorials about such things. With force, F with force, because there is already something and we need to get rid of it. Because I'm living in Europe. Br Brussels and etc local time. So I'm pointing to a file with I'm creating etc local time, which is a pointer to that particular place. And it's called the link man ln block sys to hc. Yep. Always check yourself for typos. Nano etc locale login. Okay. One, two, three, four. And enus, that's this one. To so choose your language and then generate the language. All right. Scrolling down. The shorter alternative for me, anyway, my language equals en. I do always suggest you to use English because of the search terms, you'll get more hits. And you need to know the technical term, not in your language, but in English for the hits. We have um, Photoshop or InDesign and an emmertje in Dutch it's nice but it's actually a bucket all right and you'll find more tutorials about buckets than you'll find about images that's what I always say to my students don't put it in English learn what a layer is instead of a lag etc v console Conf. All right, let's see. Typos. The first one, I did not check for typos, but it's okay. The second one looks good too. All right, enter. Scrolling down, host name. Echo Arch Linux. Gonna put it in etc. Wow, my <laughs> caps lock was on there. Host name, ah, host name, yes, and then now etc hosts, and uh, off we go. One to seven point zero point zero point one. Local host, local host, one point seven point zero point seven point one. Arch Linux local domain. Tap. Arch Linux. Control X, yes, yes, enter. Done. We do want to have internet afterwards. Minus S, network manager. And here something can go wrong. You have to enable it. You have to tell them, hey, work. System CTL, enable, capital N, capital M, three lines, move on. Root password. Maybe root wants a password, maybe not. And then we are at the bootloaders, right? Grub is the most simple, I found the, the, the default standard that we've been using for the last four years. But I'm gradually yeah, making some more. So refind is there, system dboot is up. So I scroll down, I scroll down, I scroll down, I scroll down. And then you have this link. Refind as alternative to grub. Systemd boot as alternative to grub. Okay. Clicking on systemd boot. 
it explains at the beginning we should have mounted device SDA1 in UFI inside MNT boot, not EFI. So we've done that. And then next thing is boot CTL install. And we get a long list, long list of stuff. Okay, fine. Next thing is nano boot loader loader.conf timeout. If we don't do timeout, we don't see anything. It just moves on, boof, out of login, and we don't see any choices. So timeout five, this you can delete. I'm not gonna keep this. And then enter maybe, because this is important. Default, we're gonna choose for Arch. We're gonna make three files, and, and then you have a, drop, uh, a list of choices. Otherwise, it's just the one. And if the timeout is um, not set, it just boots in the default, right? But we will do want to have a choice because I have something interesting to show you. So default arch, timeout five, okay. Editor, no. If you don't do editor, you can, uh, if you say editor, yes, eh, you can press, I think, E or was it tab. You can edit the lines uh, at boot time. So editor, no is much nicer, graphically nicer and that's it right okay control x yes so that's the first thing we scroll down and we're gonna create a file out of nothing boot loader entries we're pointing to arch so we're gonna make a file that's called arch.conf it's empty and we're gonna say this, whatever you type here, is going to be your title, right? So Arch Linux makes sense. And then where is our kernel? Well, it's actually VM Linux with a Z, and then Linux is there. And then init RAM init R D file, my init RAM file system Linux.ng typos not allowed okay and then the options S with an s <laughs> I've, I've typed already option in a previous uh, attempt and yeah he'll say not good don't get it if you type something i'll show you that as well sda3 read white read write oh my uh -huh. okay Control X, yes. Now I thought let's make uh, this little bit um, copy paste kind of thing. I don't like to type. So if I do a boot EFI, uh, there's an, an editor. I need to edit something in my website, I see. Let me do that immediately, otherwise I'll forget. Voila. And is it so see copy loader yes and then entries we've created just the one what if we just copy pasted it over to the name that we're gonna type arch fallback.conf so if one line is not working we're gonna use the far fallback so the arch fallback.conf at this point in time it's still exactly the same thing copy is a copy boot loader entries arch fallback so we have to tell in the title that it's a fallback and we have to tell in the linux kernel well the init ram file system here fallback am i correct let's check all right so that's done next thing is a very interesting as well I can go with arrow up, I can do already some work. So let's copy paste arch.conf again, but then a terminal. You are giving the user the possibility to go to TTY basically from your uh, boot up system, your boot up screen. If you just tell them that it's gonna be for the terminal and beneath, being behind here, we need to type some code systemd.unit 
equals multi-user and that's quite fun i, I kind of like the idea to be able to get to the tty immediately so you choose i want to go graphical there's a fallback and there is also let's go to tty do the dark screen the black screen and remove nvidia change this change that install that reboot that okay done yes done and no typos Control x yes then it says here that there is something there's a service we can enable system ctl enable the if the boot needs to be updated the service will take care and the systemd boot will be okay and the last thing is the check not you don't need to do it but uh, maybe it's best you did it so you see your work what did i do the boot ctl has a list it has a list to go to the firmware as you see reboot into firmware interface but there is your stuff the arch links with the green default the arch links terminal and you can check again and i am checking again for typos and if there is a mistake it will say in immediately underneath boot ctl list it will say like options if you type option without an s it'll say don't know what it is and i'm gonna skip it that's what is the message you'll get so this looks good and then it says go back to the main tutorial so i'll do a in the browser you go to forward to backward or you say back to the left or right and then we're at, at the end basically so everything is installed we can reboot but since we are in since we shrouted we exit the shroud we unmount anything that's already there okay and then reboot and then hopefully right hopefully you'll see four lines on three lines no four <laughs> so these are the lines you saw the seconds that we had um control r is not possible let me do a restart again so five four three two and those are the choices and off you go that's one of them we're there then oh i should better i should have used this one so we go in here that's the terminal of course at this point in time they're looking exactly the same thing but just showing yeah it works and then the other one is the fallback okay so back to the normal boot arch linux and we're not we're not finished yet right this uh, phase one is done we can boot but booting to what so next step is phase two and with um, login as root they say now and my password as root I can do a pacman minus syyu for example get all the databases in nothing changed in the meantime nano etc pacman.conf they want to have fast downloads I have to tell them to go for parallel downloads again this is my system not the live dvd or live usb whatever you want to call it best completion done that already scrolling and yes eric does not exist yet so user add minus m minus g users minus capital g audio video network comma wheel comma storage comma or kill and then minus s the shell is been bash for us for eric created password for oh that's wrong when i do this it's the password for the root i don't want to change password for root so uh, okay password for eric is a very difficult password voila 
and then we go for wow editor equals nano please visudo right tap tap almost at the bottom go back up and look for this line wheel all all now we have four alls they just changed it so wheel all equals all 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 <laughs> i've changed it also on the website Control x yes with this line eric can do pseudo things if i don't do that then you get this message from Archlinks. hey you, you can't do this and you have been reported to the administrator something like that fun so eric is in he is in i can only update my system with pseudo because i'm part of wheel et voilà we scroll we scroll we scroll next step we do want to have something graphical who's taking care of our graphics pseudo admin minus s xorg server and xorg apps and xorg x init and x term if you want to have a terminal or not depends what you want plan to do afterwards right And then the drivers in VirtualBox doesn't mean a thing. But trust also the open source drivers, a good message. You don't need to have NVIDIA drivers. There are great drivers on Linux. You don't need to have the proprietary drivers on NVIDIA.com, right? No need for that, unless you want it for gaming. Then they say LightDM, SDM, GDM, Lie, uh, lots of choices. I'm gonna go for SDDM, and that's being installed. SDDM has the advantage that it has like tons of themes, like really tons of themes, not just five or ten. No, a lot. But enable it, otherwise, enable it. SDDM. So it's enabled, create the symlink. Now I can actually boot up and I get a beautiful SDM. Now the standard default theme, but there's nothing behind it. The SDM can't log into something. So you need to have something. And it's so easy on Arch Linux. You decide to have Mate, you decide to have Cinnamon, you decide to have Plasma, right? It's It is really just a few words like xfc4 uh wait numlock is not on xfc4 and xfc4 goodies and i'm a happy man i've got myself a desktop another enter <laughs> 169 packages so let's scroll on mm -hmm. sdm service okay next step voila we're through so now we are on the page, choose a desktop. So I'll put this video in there as well. This is gonna be called All-in-One Arch Linux Installation UFI with XFCE and Systemd, right? And the boot up is different, that's all it is. That's the extra value of the video, pseudo reboot. Choose, I have no problem for this being black, there is no point. I don't know even don't even know if you can color this behind the background so if you know please share your knowledge beneath the video but i don't want anything this is super for me this is just clean and then you boot up arch links but i would like to know if this is possible so this is the standard default look as the m default and of course this is the default of um, xfce and let's make him aware that we do have a little bit more real estate apply and then depending on the system you're on in my case i am on is it this one yeah i am on the vmware you can tell them with virtual box vmware another like qmu tell them to have something wow let me include that in the video as well settings settings manager keyboard keyboard layout layout off add 
anything you want, remove anything you don't want, and keep Azerti over. So, um, circle type then minus S, what was I going to type? I forgot. I really forgot, so I'm gonna type something else. <laughs> NeoFetch, what were you saying when we discovered our keyboard? Yeah, because we're on VMware, right? There are often tools for these guys. In this case, it's called OpenVM Tools. It's not installed. That's why I didn't find my resolution. That's why I didn't find your resolution. Sudo systemctl enable what? VM Tools. Service. Done. And then now you can keep on learning about uh, XFCE and let's end with another logout restart maybe yeah yeah sure with um, TTY right so I do like this option the terminal option so if this is not working for whatever reason I can go to this line and I'm in all right I'm in I say oh my god I did something wrong, I do this, or I remove that, or I change this, nano is working, just um, do your thing. And that's what um, what's interesting. All right, enjoy, cheers.